Wondering whether you should refinance your student loans or not? Well then stay tuned to find out exactly whether you should do it and if so, how to go about getting it done. What's up y'all, my name is Tommy Bobo, your credit and personal finance coach. If this is your first time on my channel, I'd just like to say welcome. Typically on this channel, I'm gonna be talking about things related to credit and personal finance. So if you're interested in improving your credit score and achieving financial freedom, then be sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my future videos. So let's go ahead and jump into how to go about refinancing your student loans. You know, I was looking up statistics on how student loans have been performing uh, these last couple years, and I saw something that was quite staggering. Apparently since 2009, up until this point, student loan debt has more than doubled here in the US. The outstanding student loan debt is now at $1.4 trillion and is second only to home loans, right? So mortgage debt. Statistics show that the average student is graduating from colleges with debt at around $34,000. And honestly, I can say I'm not that surprised. You know, I kind of go back and think about how my life was or my journey was whenever I was in college. I remember going to college and at times I would have to go to the financial aid office to actually sign paperwork for student loans. And I didn't really know what I was signing, right? They have you sign loan documents, promissory notes, things like that left and right. And you're really just signing it and just trying to get finished as fast as you can. I remember I'd be sitting in the office and asking them like, hey, are we done? I got class in 10 minutes, I gotta go, things like that. I wouldn't really even pay attention to what I was signing, all the contracts that they're having me fill out. And I think that's kind of how it is uh, in general in society, right? A lot of students are getting into all of this debt and they're really just kind of trying to make it through their classes and trying to figure out how they can um, get enough money or uh, be able to get enough in loans to cover the classes that they want to take to be able to graduate. And so I was not surprised at all whenever I saw that the, uh, the debt was doubling, especially because they're saying that schools have doubled or tripled their tuitions in the last 10, 15 years. Okay, so just by you seeing that, that kind of gives you an idea how crazy it has been when it comes to college debt. Now, why should you actually refinance your student loans? Okay, I wanted to kind of jump into first, what are some of the benefits of it? And to see whether these benefits were even uh, what you were looking at. And if you don't have, don't see these benefits when you look at your own student loans, then it might be a situation where you don't really need to uh, go ahead and refinance and you should be just fine where you are. The first reason to finance, refinance your student loans is straight up just the interest rate. You know, a lot of times you might have gotten a private loan or even some federal loans that are fairly high and you might be paying a way higher interest rate than uh, back then when you got your loan than what the rates are going at now, okay? A lot of the times I've even heard of people who are getting interest rates as high as 10%. Uh, there's even some rates that go as high as 15% right and in those situations it might make more sense for you to refinance into a loan when you could potentially get a rate as low as three percent then it's it's kind of a no-brainer for you to just refinance because you would end up saving so much more money than you're going to end up paying uh, if you stick with that exact same loan to give you an example let's say that you have a loan amount of thirty thousand right and you have a 10 year loan pay period. Now changing your interest rate just from a 10% interest rate down to a 3% interest rate, you would be able to save $13,000 in interest. $13,000. Okay, so in that case, it's not even it's not even a question about you uh, being able to, uh, or you refinancing, right? It just is clear cut that you might as well at the very least, go out there and start talking to some loan company, loan refinancing companies to see what kind of rates you can get. Because if you can get down to the good, a good rate of 3%, then it makes perfect sense for you to refinance out and be able to take advantage of not only the low interest rate, but also the lower monthly payments that's gonna come with having a low interest rate. Now, in the example I gave you, you'd be able to even lower your monthly payments by over $100 a month. And really guys, that $100 a month was just $100 of interest that you would have been paying every single month that now because you have that lower rate, you're able to eliminate. And that kind of jumps into my next point is being able to lower your monthly payments, right? There's a lot of people who are having issues. Um, they're not able to save as much. They're not able, you know, you're not able to live as comfortably as you, sh you should or you could because you're in a situation where you have a lot of loan payments that you're making. Now, it might be a situation where you're able to refinance and you're able to really lower that monthly payment and now you're just gonna have a little bit more room to breathe financially. And one, the final benefit that I look at is being able to remove a cosigner. I knew whenever I was in college, there was a lot of people who, uh, you know, they just didn't qualify for certain loans or they weren't able to get 
um, uh, different types of loans. So the loans that they had available to them were things like, I believe it was called the Parent Plus Loan. Uh, things were basically you had to have a co-signer. So your parents would co-sign the loan with you. Now, the issue with that is if you, anything that you do bad with that loan, it shows up on your parents' credit as well. So I know a lot of people who've gotten to a point where once they graduated, they had a good job, they decided that they would refinance out of that loan. That way they could uh, just get their parents or their co-signers off of their loans, right? So they, you know, they didn't want to be in a situation where something happens and it affects both them and their uh, loved ones. So that might be another reason why you decide that you just want to refinance, not so much because of um, the interest rate or the loan payments, but to just be able to get off, get whoever helped you pay those loans off of the actual loan documents. Now, one caveat I do want to say is if you have federal student loans, you do want to be careful. Depending on the types of uh, federal loans you have, it might actually make more sense for you to not uh, actually switch or refinance because whenever you refinance your loans, you're not refinancing it through the government. What you're going to be doing is you're going to find a private company that's willing to refinance your loans at a lower rate or monthly payment, right? But you got to keep in mind that with federal loans, there's a lot of really great uh, protection programs that they have that you're not going to be able to take advantage of if you end up refinancing. Some of the possible benefits that you might lose is things like uh, the current interest and payment waiver, you know, access to potential loan forgiveness. So for example, if you're a teacher who um, you're looking to uh, do the loan forgiveness program and you qualify for that, typically it's something where they say if you work as uh, you, a certain perfection, a certain profession or occupation for like 10 years, then you can have your loans forgiven. If you're in a situation like that, then it might make more sense for you to not refinance. If you can see that, uh, it makes sense from a monetary standpoint. Okay. Then in that case, if you don't want to refinance, because if you refinance, you no longer have that benefit anymore. Another example is flexible repayment plans, uh, interest free repayment, uh, interest free payment postponements and loan discharge options, things like that. So those are kind of options that only are available with federal student loans. Typically you're not going to find it with private loans. Don't uh, stick to the end of this video. I actually have found a company that does offer a little bit of some of these protection plans or protection programs that you can take advantage of as well. Now, what exactly do you need to refinance? Now, right off the bat, the first one they're going to look at is obviously going to be your income. Now you are no longer a student. You are now supposedly working a a good or working at a good paying job, right? You've gotten, you spent four years, you racked up this debt so you could find a good solid paying job. And now that you have this job, you are earning an income higher than maybe what you would have earned it right out of college or right out of high school. And so now what the refinance company is going to look at is how much income that you're able to be bringing in. This is going to be key to deciding uh, whether you can uh, qualify for refinancing and just making sure that you would be, if they refinance that you would still be able to make payments on your, uh, on all these loans that you're going to be refinancing. Another thing they look at is your credit. You typically want to be at about the 650 to 680 or above to qualify for uh, refinancing your loans. You know, anything lower, you won't, even, you probably won't qualify. And if you do qualify, it'll be at a worse rate than uh, getting that 3%, which 3% is typically the best rate right now that you're seeing out on the market, depending on when you're watching this video. Now, if you don't have good credit, I'm going to link to a video I did on how to fix your credit step by step. It'll kind of walk you through how to quickly be able to fix your credit and we'll also link to any um, other types of uh, other links and other videos that you can use to be able to go in more depth if you want to really be able to fix every little thing on your credit. But just following the tips in that, those videos, you should be able to get close to the 700s and be able to qualify for a great rate on a uh, student loan refinance. And lastly, what they look at is your cash flow. Um, if you haven't heard of cash flow before, the idea is just how much money you have, like the, the sum of how much money you have coming in and going out, right? And the way it works is they want to make sure that you have what's called a debt to income ratio of about 50%. So pretty much if you make a thousand dollars every month, then you're really only spending 500 per month paying off your debts, okay? And that's gonna be typically what they're gonna use is what shows up on your credit report. So they're gonna look like, what kind of auto loans do you have? Are you paying, uh, um, are you paying a car note every month? How much is that car note? And then uh, do you have a credit card? How much are you paying on your credit card every month? Things like that. So that kind of tells you that you wanna make sure, especially if you're looking to refinance, maybe it might be a good idea to pay off that credit card. That way you have a less, or it kind of lowers your debt to income ratio and makes 
makes it look a lot better uh, and gives you a better rate whenever you do apply for that that uh, student loan. Now, I'll be linking down below to a few different websites that you can use to uh, actually go about getting uh, student loan refinancing and you can actually use those sites kind of uh, uh, be able to let them run your credit and get an idea what kind of scores that you would you would be able to get so you can kind of compare across the board but honestly one of my favorite sites and really it's my top site right now is a site called common bond and i'll link to it down below but the way common blonde works is you can apply and get a quote and the great thing is they actually won't even hurt your credit like they don't what they do is they do what's called a soft pull so it won't even show up on your credit report or it won't ding your credit report at all and so you're able to uh you're able to get a at least a soft quote so what they do is they get a give you a quote of about what they think you would be able to get. So let's say they gave you the best rate. They said they gave you a 3% for all your loans and they give you an idea how much you would be paying per month. Then once you accept it, that's whenever they actually run your credit uh, fully. And at that point, you already know what you're getting. So you're good to go and you can accept it. And the benefit of that is if you do just want to get an idea what kind of rates you could get, you can just go ahead and sign up real quick and see what kind of information they give back to you. And that way you can make your decision from there. You don't have to worry about it being in your credit when you, you just kind of wanted to take a look. You weren't sure if you wanted to actually refinance or not. And now as of posting this video, their interest rates range from about a 3% to a 6% uh, for the interest rate. One thing that I think is great about these guys is they do what's called a forbearance. Okay. So for those of you guys who haven't done forbearance before, the reason why I love it so much is because, you know, there's, you know, life happens, right? There might be a situation where, for example, right now you're financially secure, everything's going good, but you never know anything can happen in your life at the blink of an eye. And next thing you know, your, your world's been flipped upside down, right? And the great thing is typically forbearance is, was only something that was offered with really federal loans. And they actually give you a forbearance of, it looks like up to 24 months. So if you're in a situation where maybe you can't really make payments as you were doing before, you can actually reach out for, uh, to them for this forbearance program and be able to get the forbearance for up to that 24 months, which can kind of help you, you know, just relieve a little stress and help you get back on your feet uh, before you start making the payments again. So I think that is one huge, huge, huge benefit that they offer that you're not going to see with a lot of other uh, student loan refinancing companies. And another thing I really liked about them is they actually partnered with a charity called Pencils of Promise. And so they're pretty much helping kids in uh, Ghana, Africa. Uh, to be able to just go to school, right? So they, what they've done is they've helped build over 500 or close to 500 schools and have already donated over a million dollars. So it kind of makes you feel good as well, knowing that not only are you able to refinance and uh, you're able to better pay your student loans, but you're also paying for somebody in another country to be able to go to school and right and helping them fund their education as well. So that's also a plus. Now, again, I'm going to include all the links to, uh, common bond as well as any other uh, student loan refinancing companies that i see at this time being so you have an idea uh, exactly what uh, are the best uh, student loan refinancing sites at this time if you know any better sites be sure that you throw it down in the uh, comments that way what i'm going to do is i'll do the research on it and if that's a good site and i i'm able to talk with them and be sure that it's actually legitimate and everything like that then i'll add it to the list as well okay so that way we can keep making sure the list is updated as the time goes on and that's going to be pretty much it guys for this video make sure you hit the like button on this video so we can get this video out to as many people as possible also be sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my future content and again guys if you are looking for anything that has to do with fixing your credit I'm going to link those videos down below that will help you be able to fix your credit step by step. That way, if you're not in the range to be able to do a refinance, then you can actually fix your credit uh, quickly and be able to apply. That way you can still get uh, these low rates before they end up raising the rates again. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much it for this video, guys. I'll see you at the next one.